we have Seize the Bean. This is actually from Quality Beast. Um, they are a game company that you can find under qualitybeast.com, at Quality Beast. It looks like Quality Beast Games or underscore Quality Beast for some of their social media. Or you can also find this game itself at SeizeTheBean.com. This is a 60 to 90 minute game, so it's slightly longer than some of the stuff we've opened before. It is for one to four players. And it says ages 13 and up. And now this, like I talked about, I did receive from Kickstarter. So all of these extra components sitting on top are part of the stretch goals and stuff like that. Um, I, I did check back. I did not back one of the upper levels, which is um, for deluxe editions or anything like that. So this is going to be a, a base copy with some of the Kickstarter stretch goals that I've received on top of it. So do keep that in mind if you're watching this, looking back and considering it in the game. This will be the base version of the game. And I will detail out what, what's from the main box and then we'll detail out the stretch goal extra pieces that they've given me as well. So I'm going to do, I'm going to put all of these extra stretch goal pieces over here to the side right here at the edge of you and we'll make sure we go over them later so it's multiple stacks of cards uh extra components and stuff that i've received which will be uh interesting to see all the art work that went into that we'll talk about the quality of it um many of you know how i do these unboxings it's not a a quick snappy thing just oh it's a deck of cards or whatever it is i'm going to try to show you all the artwork i want to sh talk about the quality of the components uh what they're made of so as you can see uh seize the bean 60 to 90 minutes one to four players 13 and up created by dylan howard cromwell art by uh mario fernandez garcia pulgar co-designed by andy couch and co-created by josh wilson uh released by quality beast now this is a pretty hefty box so i know there's quite a few components in here um, you'll be able to see just on the back it already stocks, starts to talk about components from a life-size spoon um, for optional dexterity mechanic. Um, some people do and don't like those in Euro-style games, so we'll see how that applies. Of course, there's solo mode. Um, there's resin resources, it appears like. Uh, barista meeples. Um, looks like over f almost 600 playing cards. So, of course, with all the extra add-ons, we're going to have well over 600 cards in this. Uh, player boards, 250-something uh, tokens. So, there's a lot packed into this one game. And even right here on the, the box itself, it, it talks you through what you should find in the box, which is nice to see that directly. And, like, at the bottom of that list, it's already talking about uh, Ziploc bags. So, that tell me, tells me right there, there's a at least thought that went into the organization once you've punched it um so it may not have an enter but we're going to find out once we pop into it now it does also have that same information here on the the edge of the box so that's always um nice to see that they've thought through that and then the sides of the the box have different uh style styles of artwork different characters so they've really uh, tried to make the a full experience with this box. It's not just, okay, plain artwork on the sides. There's, it's very informative and very, um, as I blank on the best word. But you get what I'm saying. So as you can see, even the top of the box has more artwork. Decently tight fitting lid on that, which is nice to find. Um, we've had a few games recently that are not as tight of tight of fit, uh, so you're more likely to have the box uh, lid slide off if you're standing it sideways or something like that. So right on top we have our uh, rule book. Now we'll see what the difference is because the box itself did say 60 to 90 minutes. Now this rule book is already saying 45 to 90. 
so we'll see if there's a reason for that difference. Um, so rule book uh, already credits right on the face of it. Looks like it. We're going to start with a component list, and it breaks it down pretty good. Uh, have a little story, the goal of the game, and then kind of the general. Uh, almost tips like how to earn good reviews. There are five general ways to earn good reviews. So like almost like the, f the primary methods to play the game or or maybe paths towards victory, it might seem like. But having a very detailed component list that's easy to read, broken down and labeled com compared to this is very helpful. Uh, starts into setup uh, with a full layout on the side. Uh, breaks it down by steps uh, with smaller pictures and tables and extra notes. So it does seem very easy to read at least the layout. And it starts to break down uh, different uh, subset notes and stuff. So it's like, oh, I need to ma mainly know this and then jump to this. And it looks like they've also highlighted the names of very specific items. So it's easy to catch your attention and realize, okay, this is saying this is the specific part. Now go find it. Uh, then it starts to talk about turn order with actual examples, which is always appreciated. And then the rule goes into the different rules, different card types, it appears. Uh, yep, more rules. Uh, then it talks about the game flow, and more about your turns, your actions, and the phases that happen within that. Uh, with a lot of uh, examples. So we do have a lot more pages to read in this, but as you can see, there's some larger pictorial views. Um, all the paragraphs are broken up very well. So you're not reading giant chunks to find what you want to figure out if you're having to go back and learn, uh, recheck something. So it keeps talking about more phases of the game uh, and fulfilling orders because uh, it's based uh, on kind of like you're running a a coffee shop you're acting like kind of almost like baristas and so you're fulfilling orders doing other things and so the way they've taken this artwork throughout the book as well is uh, quite nice um you can tell they put a lot of thought into it and a lot of extra effort to to tie this theme into the whole thing and we continue with the uh, so the, now this talks about game end and, and then talking about scoring and with more examples, uh, the different abilities from different customers breaking down card specifics. Looks like uh, additional icons. So quick reference if, so it looks like there's gonna be a lot of uh, quick reference iconography, so, but as soon as you learn it, it, should, it does seem to be pretty straightforward because it's like uh, the beans, one bean, two bean, three bean. You can see it in the picture. So I'm sure as soon as you learn what those mean, it should be straightforward because you probably won't have to read as much on the cards themselves. Uh, quite a few pages of uh, credits, it seems. And then we have our quick reference at the back. Always helpful. Uh, that is a lot of quick reference. Uh, four pages of it. And then our next book inside the box appears to be, yeah, they're calling it the snack menu. So it's expansions. The first uh, rule book was the drink menu. So all the standard coffee drinks and everything. And when you go to a coffee shop, you sometimes you crave a little snack on top. You want to add a little bit of something and it's, uh, after you've quenched your thirst. So, uh, so it looks like it goes into the introduction uh, they even have a word on diversity, so it's based. Uh, the game is based on Berlin because they love the city's diversity, and so it kind of ex uh, explaining uh, inspiration and why they made certain choices with art styles and such. Goes into all the expansion add-on components, uh, contents. If you were to play five or six players with expansions. Uh, so then it starts talking about the different districts, uh, which are the different little expansions, it appears like. Uh, additional customer abilities, 
from the expansions. Of course, the same style uh, as the original rule book, with a lot of great examples of larger uh, setup examples, breaking things down for you so there's no confusion. continues into the different expansions of course which some of the packs that will open at the end that were not in this box or some of the other appear to be expansion packs uh, so just even more variants that goes over so this is quite a few pages of expansion content um, really interesting to see how much they've added and how much uh, curious to see how, how that actually changes the game and then now we hit the rules for solo mode the kind of the different difficulty choices oh there's it looks like 20 different levels for Starbots difficulty levels so that's a, a lot uh, quite a bit of playthrough for solo as well it's not just going to be a beat your own score there's going to be different goals it appears like of some sort and then uh yeah so we're now we're now it's going through scenarios for solo play uh, several pages it appears and then we got another quick reference guide So now this um, add-on rule book, 54, so 56 pages long. That's quite a few pages for an expansion. Let's see what the original, how long the original was. It was only 36. Yeah, so that expansion rule book is quite a bit longer than even the original rule book. But it is nice that they've already added that. Interesting that they broke the solo rules into the expansions instead of the main rule book, uh, considering the base game talks about it being solo and I don't know how many of those expansions actually come in this but that also gives everyone the opportunity if it doesn't come with the expansion be, to read up on the expansion be like okay this is one I'm interested in finding and, and adding to the game so now we'll set the rule books aside and we got some punch board it appears like right here so we know what time it is when we find punch board we're going to do a little bit of that ASMR quality check. So this cardboard isn't super thick. Um, it, it's relatively flexible, so it's not hard and stiff like some uh, some cardboard. So we're going, to, we're going to see how well that punches um, and kind of listen to it to see how well it snaps, um, how how well it's been cut, and then I'll show off the different um, tab marks on it, if they were large tabs, small tabs, if uh, there's any tearing present as we punch these. So I'm going to start with uh, one of these standard rectangle style uh, cutouts. They do have curved ed edges, uh, ends instead of uh, just straight cut. So that, that's always helpful for full cuts and you're less likely to have ripping in a corner when they do this. So that's a pretty soft sound. And the way they have these together, they're actually uh, sharing the cut edge as opposed to each individual one on these, which is a good use of the cut space. Um, I So I, I know there's uh, more and more talks about sus uh, sustainability and not using as many resources uh, when making games and so making the most of uh, all every cardboard piece or whatever it may be for the components you make is better for the environment of course So now I'm going to attempt to punch out one of these slightly bigger pieces. Let's see how it sounds. 
So not too bad. Uh, not super loud again, but just crisp enough that it shows that there's some kind of tab on, on the edge of it. Very small, hard to see tab once it's been punched. Um, so very minimal if exposure to the uh, tab at the end because that tab is so small, this cardboard's so thin to full cut that they've achieved. So I've not uh, shown any risk of it tearing yet, which I appreciate. So uh, like a few other games we've had recently, these are almost falling out with just the tiniest bit of pressure. So it does show that they they have a very nice full cut on them. So nothing's catching. So the the die used to cut it, or if, if they were potentially a laser cut, actually went all the way through. You're not having a partial depth cut, uh, which is where we typically see the tearing happen. That's going to go to the recycle bin. And then we go to the next board. So it looks like we have four, five total boards we get to punch. So we're just gonna hang out and talk about these boards. It almost seems like some of these are player specific boards or just the way they've laid them out. Uh, somewhat repetitive to make it easy for them to maximize the usage. Uh, but some of these are do look like player colors pieces. Uh, I'm seeing like a green, almost a reddish. I'm sure because the box uh, mentioned the Ziploc bags, uh, we'll have a lot of sorting to do to keep these set pieces separate to store as well. But you can see just how easily these are popping out for me. Um, does look like there's some residue from the cutting out. Next up in the box we have, it appears to be sticker sheets. Uh, so there's a lot to, of little pieces to punch. So it looks like stickers. Now, I'm not sure what these stickers go to yet. Maybe they go on particular pieces. We'll figure that out. But as you can see, two sheets of stickers. I'm going to do, I'll try to leave those. That's, oh, glare isn't too bad. So you can start to see some of the icons and stickers on those while I unbox the rest of the game. Next up in the box, we have the player boards. Uh, there were five of these and the game is about kind of running your own coffee shop in Berlin. So each of these player boards actually have their own shop name. So we have the Saint Ob Obrohols. I'm probably majorly mispronouncing that, so I do apologize. Uh, I'm seeing an O-B-E-R-H-O-L-Z, potentially. If there's a correct way to pronounce that, you can tell me, because I have not taken uh, German or anything like that to help with that style of name. Next we have the Bonanza. I can at least pronounce that. The the Blowhole Hone. Blauhaun. Rotisserie. So that that was terrible. I yeah definitely tell me how to pronounce that one. Uh, they have a little sign out front. The uh, ca cafe rotisserie and then we have the concierge so I can at least pronounce that one again thankfully uh, the back side of these kind of have uh, little tidbits about the, the the different shops and their names uh, uh, of course different characters with them as well With different representation so it kind of feeds into the theme of uh, what we like to promote of a full uh, being inclusive 
of all different types of players and backgrounds. So showing that off is, is cool to see. And we already talked about it in the rule book how it, talk, it showed off. Um, this is, game was kind of uh, influenced by the coffee scene in Berlin and how diverse it is there. So now we got, whoa, we got a lot of deck of cards, which I knew there'd be a lot because on the back, on the box, we said there were uh, just under 600 cards total. So there'll be a lot of interesting art to look through. Now we got bags of components, uh, Ziploc bags, which will be very important for all the cards and components we just uh, punched. And then on the box, it did talk about um, the optional use of the life-size spoon for a dexterity mechanic if you choose to add it. And then a little bit of an insert that's more of a shipping style insert. Uh, you can keep it in there. Uh, we'll see if I, I keep using it. Let's have fun and put that spoon on screen right there. Because the theme of the game is uh, running a coffee bar or a barista. Uh, uh, so and serving coffee as a barista so very thematic and then we we showed off the other side so the outside box but even they put even more artwork onto the inner box piece that you don't typically see when it's on a shelf um giving more credits so you have like the, the rules editing the early logistics early development naming people and we have uh, the co-designer, co-developed, co-developed. Uh, each kind of has very unique stylistic um, pictures of them, of them, it seems. Uh, Co-created, created and designed by art and graphics. So they're a really fun way on how they've given the credits to different people who've been a part of the game. And then special thanks we got more special thanks, and then even more uh, with the quality beast taking a turn to talk. So now we'll really dig into all of these components that we just pulled out. So I'm going to put the player boards to the side. We're taking a look at those. We can do it like this. Uh, put them there for now. We're definitely going to have to shift all of those punched board pieces to the side. So let's see what's in these packages. Before. Cards are probably going to be last just because there's so many of them to do. Now uh, there's talk about meeples and resin components on the box, so we're going to see what all of these are now as a reminder. Okay, so in this plastic bag we have a set of meeples Uh, they have been screen printed it appears uh, it looks like four different colors which I show both the front and back of each so it makes it look like each of these uh, meeples are wearing aprons and then because it's a coffee uh, based game they've gone with uh, the more coffee inspired colors of like the vanilla, the black or the, the light or the dark roast per se uh, is probably potentially the inspiration for those different colors. And then talking of the, the coffee, we have the actual uh, resin coffee beans. So these are actually shaped and sized like a coffee bean. They have a uh, nice quality to them, uh, kind of different. The inside of it has a little cutout, uh, making it feel like a bean, not just like a half, half oval or anything, but it actually is shaped and feels like a bean. Quite a few of them, so I'm sure when we dump them all out, it's going to have the effect of having a lot of coffee beans. So this, the box did say ages 13 and up, so this is definitely not a game to have around small kids or potentially pets at the table uh, with this many pieces you will have a chance of choking hazard if you're not careful so uh, just another reason for all the ziplocs that were included with this because these are packages that have to be torn open 
Um, so we got the the dark regular coffee coffee beans, and then we have a bag of these uh, green ones. Yeah, uh, not knowing what they fully represent yet. Maybe they represent like a green tea or a matcha tea or something like that, which is something slightly different than just the standard coffee grounds that you might get at a coffee shop. And we got a little Ziploc full of, I believe these are chocolate milks. Uh, so you have, uh, these are wooden components, uh, special shapes, indented, uh, kind of a brown top and bottom with a white label wrapped around them. Uh, because they have the custom color multi-print uh, colors on them. I wouldn't call it screen printing, but even though it's possible that it's screen printed. Uh, but there's dual color, so they put a lot of extra effort into these components. Next up, we have all of the, I'm just going to uh, call them milk cartons, regular milk. Um, this time they were white with a blue wrap label. Um, these are all wood. Um, so when you hold them all, there's there's some, some weight, a, a tiny bit of heft to it. You can actually feel the quality. It's not just a, a low-end plastic. You can tell the effort they put into uh, designing this and making all the components feel in line. And then next up, um, these are... I'm trying to remember what they, the Kickstarter said these pieces were. Might be on the box too. Probably look it up in. I'll have to look it up in the rule book to verify what these color represent. So I believe these. This next bag is like the sugar cubes. Maybe this is something of the sort, um, honey or something like that. But they're actually textured. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but up close you can see they kind of made, made the outer texture um, just minutely rough uh, to kind of mimic uh, the rough outer texture of a sh actual sugar cube and not just like a bowl of sugar um, granules, but the cubes of sugar themselves. Might be a little hard to see on screen, but these are plastic resin again. Just like these. So, a uh, very textile based game. Uh, so it's not just all cardboard. You, you actually have uh, something to handle. And like, I don't know how this is used but, uh, in the game dexterity element of using a, a, a scoop or the spoon. But maybe you're, you're getting your coffee beans in it during the game in some way. So that'd be interesting to see how that incorporates. I'm going to try to put some of this stuff back and then we'll start looking at cards. So the milks and the sugar type pieces all have their own Ziplocs already that they were in to start with, as were the, what else was in the Ziploc already? Something else. I'll put, uh, but I'll probably bust out some of the Ziplocs right now to start putting these pieces away. Like I'm sure uh, I could put the meeples in this bag or I'm just gonna put all of the coffee beans in this bag for now. So you can kind of hear the nice uh, quality, uh, that heft of all those coffee beans hitting. It actually makes it sound like you're, you're pouring them out of a container to an extent. Uh, make it easy on myself. Greens are going in with it. I can easily separate those out later. There go, there's the meeples. Let those bruises just work in the beans. That's where they end up somehow. 
Okay, so now we have multiple decks of cards. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll just set stacks aside and start opening them up one at a time and see what is in them. First thing we're going to check for, um, which stands out pretty nicely, is this um, tear tab. Uh, you can see the gold line they used in it, so it's easy to see and recognize right here on the side. Now, I did cut my nails today, so if there's any struggle on that, I'm going to place it partially on that. But if it's easy to grab, just like that was easy to grab, that's even a better benefit, showing that it does not take much to find that and open it. Okay. So these are a variety of colors on the bottom. So we're just going to start kind of slowly going through. Let's see what the back looks like. Potentially this is a customer card. Kind of just shows a, a general outline of a person of some sort holding a mug of what would be coffee because it's very thematic for the game. It appears this whole stack of what I just opened is going to be those. <coughs> so let's just go through and see what kind of artwork we got. So we have a young actor, a famous actress, a stage actor, a mime, a fan former street skater long border we have dogs with clothes squatter now each of these appear to have symbols in the upper left corner uh, appears to be kind of different snacks or or um, actual food they like the upper right corners appear to be other things as well, be it beans, coffee beans, and stuff. So there's actually stuff in both corners from coffee beans to the snack type items that, that it's showing. And then, so of course, we talked about how the rule book has a quick reference for the icons. And then also the bottom appears to show different icons. It looks like from like between people um, to of something. So that was a wheat paster, street vendor, a masked queerdo, okay. A conspiracy theorist, Santa on vacation, blockchain fanatic, cybersecurity expert. So a lot of a lot of variety in the characters already. Uh, decentralizer, freelance developer, data scientist, uh, esports amateur, implementation engineer open source advocate, early adopter, infamous hacker, trusty punk, metalheads, hooligans, uh, off-gridders, anti-conformists, rockabilly couple, activists, protesters. And they're apparently protesting coffee beans have feelings. Okay. Uh, we have the ultra, the anarchist, uh, bike thief, pickpockets, burglars, street dealers. So these appear to be a different type of customer. As you can see at the bottom, they have a different color. Uh, maybe they have different preferences or they perform different uh, actions in the game that maybe are more detrimental. Uh, we had the generic thug, the retired grifter, cereal mugger, coffee bean murderer, a crime boss, heist team, bouncer. Now we're getting to a darker blue, almost like a security police style of characters. We have a security guard. We have our Dienstund. I probably mispronounced that. I'm, a, I'm assuming that is a just dog in general, potentially. Or hound. Uh, we have a BVG controller uh ver uh, yeah i ruined how to say that i do apologize uh landish push you nope i should stop trying i'm just gonna put them here now because they've used um non-english terms for these and okay now we got we're back to an undercover cop 
up another non-English stroller parent, uh, single parent. So we got some the pink bottom ones that almost look like families coming in together. Modern family, uh, a couple of different uh, modern families, uh, a rich family, the in-laws. Everyone has them. Sometimes you like them. Sometimes you don't. Uh, the moo tubers I, I guess that's they're kind of uh, taking a joke on youtubers and then kind of tying in the theme with like milk uh, the nuclear family but they've been um, affected by nuclear fallout of some sort of peers because they're more monstrous and affected the whole f uh, fam <laughs> uh, that's a way to keep it more family friendly uh, switching a couple letters around we got a super vegan, uh, the smug jogger, the bodybuilder, proud yogi. I'm sure we've seen a lot of these at coffee shops in some one way or another. Uh, so tell me which which one's your favorite that you've seen or that you see the most. The acupuncturist, the part-time paleo, nudist colony law. Definitely have not seen that yet. The local coffee shop, uh, keto head. So that was just deck number one. None of them are the same yet. So if we continue in the same route, all almost 600 cards are going to be all different. But we'll take a quick look at all of them. I'll try to read them out, give us some fun names, uh, see what stands out. Uh, but with that, I don't really have time to perfectly sort them back into their color decks, unless y'all want to be here all night with me. So I'm just gonna Kind of put those back together. Um, this is definitely going to be one of those longer extended unboxing, but we're going to have fun with it. So that was deck number one. Uh, deck number two appears to have uh, more customers, so we're going to try that next. Again, it has the quick open line that you can see in the plastic, not too hard to grab. Okay, so we're gonna now we're gonna have the thoughtful barist or bassist. I do apologize, bassist. Uh, the heartfelt singer. The Mauer Park musician. The club DJ. Okay, so maybe they've been setting up to get tips and play some music while at the the coffee shop. Uh, the radio DJ to the opera star. Oh, now we got a club dealer. Maybe you don't want these in your coffee shop. Uh, shots on me. Oh, sure. Espresso shots, right? Um, we got the cocktail connoisseur, the bartender, the stag do, the hen party, the students on a Tuesday. <laughs> it's more like a bar than a a coffee bar, um, party animal, the Bergain regulars, furries, all representation matters apparently, and that's okay to each their own. Uh, the undervalued intern, yep, all interns are undervalued. We have the friendly recruiter, the fun marketer, sales associate, JavaScript engineer mobile developers and hotshot designer even don't forget the ux designers uh cto start and startup founders and now we move on to the orange bottom customers that have like dog on wheels a tricycle tycoon so these are uh, the more mobile bicycle style customers um, the food deliverers Bike mechanics, bike messengers, uh, a couple of them. The cycle snob, flatlander, fixie rider, pro tour wannabe. A lot of different types of uh, bicyclists you might find getting grabbing some coffee. Next up, you got uh, different types of students. Um, maybe we got a bookworm, 
the history buff, the IT major, art major, industrial design major, literature, uh, musicologist, the game theorist. Uh, of course, you need to study group occasionally. You can't always study alone. A PhD student, and now we got um, a different color based one. Almost looks like they're sitting down, laying back, relaxing. Um, the college dropout. Uh, the spree creature. Okay. The canal bum. <laughs> Indoor beach bum. The couch surfer. Serial moocher. Stoner. Uh, cafe camper. If you're going to go to a cafe, make sure you're paying for it uh, enough to take that seat for a long time. Be it the internet. If you're using the internet, pay for your coffees. You got the digital nomads, political fugitive. Okay, so we're moving on to almost looks like TV of some sort at the bottom. Award-winning poets, uh, unpublished screenwriter, uh, the hobby photographer. So maybe it wasn't a TV at the bottom corner. Maybe it was more like an art easel of some sort. Uh, we got the installation artist, discipline sculptor, the graffiti artist, tattoo artist, independent designers, the famous painter, and talented illustrators. Next up, we'll go to the pinkish bottom that has like two masks, uh, kind of very theater. The pro karaoke star, stand up comic, contortionist. A street dancer, a burlesque dancer, and the voice actor. So all different styles and backgrounds of um, be it students or jobs. They, I've still not seen a repeat in both the name of the card or the character art itself. All, um, each one is unique in its own way. Uh, there might be a few s subtle things that seem a little bit the same, but of course, when you're drawing this many different cards, you're going to notice, no you're going to notice a consistent art style, at least. Okay, so let's pick one of these that... Um, do these have... Okay, here. This for sure has more customers. And again, a quick open tear line. There we go. Okay, so we have Oma, which is basically a grandma. Oh, we, now we have repetitive stacks. Um, so there's, what, six of these Omas? One, two, three, four, five, six of the Opas, kind of the, the grandma and grandpa. Um, we have some lazy friends. The popular friend. The fun cousin. Next we have the quirky auntie. The and then the pug loving uncle. Oh. Then we have the musically talented mom. So those are all the ones that with repetitive art and names. Now the rest of the stack, there's some differences, so I'm going to stack these up and give us room to go over the unique ones. So now we have a bull hat hipster, the v-neck hipster, the nerd stir, technical, techno lover, the vinyl collector, the hype beast, the eccentric influencer, and a trendsetter. And then now the next ones of these are like a plane on the bottom corner. We have our interrailer, backpacker. So our travelers, the old backpacker now. 
souvenir collector. A shopaholic. Selfie stickers. Uh, bike tourists. The honeymooners. The old weekenders. Regular weekenders. Uh, now we're mo moving back to some like you know, music based. We have a busker. A fancy busker. A, a groovy drummer. And an underground rapper. And then we have... Um, there's a mustache mustache symbol on the bottom of these. We have our hatster, not a hipster, a hatster, and our beardster. So they're more known for their hat or their beard, not just a regular hip. They gotta have a very specific thing that that they're known for. So that was that deck. Again, I tried to play a song that had words in it. Did not want that. Okay, we're going to see if any of these have more. Shows the back. Um, looks like the top of this has at least more customer songs. Let this deck next. A, another quick release. Terror report package. Oh, this is making... It's so much easier to open these. I do appreciate it with how many cards there are. So let's see where the back of the cards change. I'm not sure we finish the customers first. So we'll set those aside there and go over the customers. Okay, so now we got a, a somatic body worker. The Esoteric Guru. Now we got models, third party politicians, sales directors, and Silicon Yuppie. The startups, Shark, and the Financer. And then we have the Angel Investor, Fancy Hipster, Doctors, and Lawyers. Kind of where a lot of the money is but they may, may be a little stuck up depending on which one you find and then we got um, we have a jeweler stylist elegant dresser old fashionista runway model the loud fit snappy dresser fashion designer barber and uh sneaker head so a lot of the people that really care a lot about how they look and present themselves in different ways whether you agree with it or not and then we have a journalist typing away even on a typewriter old school style press uh, the news reporter travel blogger podcaster sound guy indie filmmaker cafe critic streamer hey uh, doesn't look like me, but that's what we're doing. Social influencer. Uh, paparazzi. Uh, oh, are we getting the names? I don't rec I can't say now. It looks like a, possibly like a janitor of sorts. I, uh, Hauschmeister. Uh, uh, Maurer. Probably said it wrong. I do apologize. Uh, looks like general construction of some sort. Uh, possibly like an accountant or something, a Stauberator, hotel receptionist, okay, I can say that, <laughs> the, the body owner, an old bartender, a, a donner chef, a teacher, architect, bar owner, espresso junkie, Innovative barista, bean analyst, analyst, coffee farmer, cafe investor, latte lover, decaf lover, coffee snob, competitive barista, the brewmaster, 
Now we have a cosplayer. The collector. Oh, and he's collecting board games, it appears. Uh, that it's kind of like what I am to an extent. I do tend to have a lot of games. I don't do it purely to collect. I play them, though. Uh, the double sleever. Don't do that. I, I can't even do regular sleeves. They don't shuffle well for me. Uh, rules lawyer. Uh, some have said I'm a rules lawyer. It's more because I teach the games. I know the rules the best a lot of the times. And I try to help everyone learn them, but I don't uh, get too nitpicky. Uh, game night hostess. Uh, my space is too small to host games. I wish I could host more games. Uh, the miniature painter. Uh, wish I was that talented. Uh, the board game cafe owner. That'd be cool to have one day, but that'd be a lot of work as well. Board game translator. If I knew more languages, I would do help with that. Board game manufacturer. Always need those so we can have these games. A board game publisher. And those are the ones helping design the games and bring them to us and sell it to us. Um, so making a lot more connections with the publisher when we go to the conventions and such. So that appears to be all these different types of customers in some way. I um, could be wrong if they're actually considered customers, but I'm calling them for now because there are so many different ones. Um, naming them their professions or what you might identify them as. But that is four of, well, almost four full decks of these or sets of these cards out of eight so of almost 600 cards we're we're looking at 250 cards that are customers about and with the ones that repeated we're talking well over 200 different pieces of art and names for cards that is a lot of work that went into this game okay so the next up in that same deck that we opened it appears at a quick glance before I show them off. Uh, different things you can sell. Uh, so it shows up coffee beans on the back of milk carton, a little little hand scoop for the coffee beans. So different things we might sell in, in the coffee shops. We have charcoal croissants. Uh, you have your vintage milk uh, in a little cardboard ca carton. Uh, little pictures on each side. Antique mocha pot, avocado cake. The Kopi Luwak, the Discount Soy Milk, the Infinite Coffee, two for one lattes, box of Berliners. So there, there, that was the first set of syllables. Now, this is being the same symbol, I'm going to open this one next. See if this whole deck is. Yep, these are all the sellable items. So we'll just start looking through all those. We have a cafe starter kit, a con uh, concerto coffee, and the, oh, that's really cool artwork in the way they've had the steam rising out of that coffee uh, forming into instruments. So I do like that artwork a lot right there. The medicinal milk. Ocarina cake, nice, uh, nicely shaped cake, uh, mimicking an ocarina. The whistling French press. The polyphonic pie. Ooh, I do like the design of those slices. Really interesting to see that. Uh, the free refills. Uh, the caffeine sprinkles. Irish coffee. Uh, I will get to a point where getting a glare over here so I'll try to shift back special donuts uh, and it's shown with uh, more psychedelic artwork uh, mushroom almost the Mulocos plus 
the innovative latte art inspiring espresso so instead of it being instruments this uh the steam on this one is kind of like the light bulb moment like the inspiration they've taken into that artwork the self-service machine the verbamate milk cafe starter kit again the bakery partnerships coffee filled croissants Isotonic Espressos, hot wearables. I'm not sure I'd want to wear uh, hot drinks all over my head like that, but to each their own. Uh, GPS enabled snacks. Uh, that's a scary thought. Breakfast deals. Motivational mochas. And again, with the uh, Steam art. And this time it says you can do it. Uh, the student food student and food I'm probably mispronouncing that word. terribly I do apologize on um, the the thing itself it says good for your brain and your pocket uh, caffeinated croissants cheapest coffee in town good value bad taste free food cafe starter kit again Salmon bagel, get okay. salmon bagels, blah blah blah. Uh, so, get your locks. Uh, high capacity machines, uh, imported micro blends, hand blown mugs, hand sculpted mocha pots, intricate latte art, treacherous pastries. I'm not even gonna try to read that. The Baja croissants, drama beans, uh, the Berlinelle blend, herbal tea, karaoke cake, the popular pie, it's so popular it's gone, uh, recycled beans, energy milk, that would be an odd thing to find, curry worst croissants, Ooh. Uh, kind of seems enticing. Uh, street donuts, uh, vending machines, the smart press, the Robo Barista, USB Betcher, 3D printed pie, pre order app, unbreakable drip machine, the Black Roast, Viking Horns, Rebellious Sugar Cubes. The protest pie. Fell off truck blend. Stolen coffee machine. The, the immunity donuts. Familiar mugs. Tough donuts. Coffee holster. Uh, the diner drip machine. The bugged donuts. Glazed handcuffs and pound the donuts, the Kinder Press candy machine, the Shkoko milk, a zoo kish. I uh, probably said that wrong. I'm assuming like zoo cookies, animal cookies, the cafe starter kit again. So, again, a lot of variety in the cards and the artwork itself uh, all specialty things that can make, help your your coffee uh, or cafe coffee shop stand out okay so next up let's see if yep that looks like there's gonna be a few more items in this deck so I'm gonna open this one next how much of it is going to be items and it's going to stop there okay next we got uh the matcha lattes organic green beans protein shake uh the jimus smoothies the aloe vera cake 
lavish chalice, the 20,000 euro espresso machine for the luxury sugar cubes, high end donuts, and rich chocolate pie, the espresso machine, the artisanal demitasses, uh, dead stock soy milk, edible clothing, which looks like a latticed pie, the elaborate cake, the paparazzi French press, photogenic blends, picturesque breakfast, rumor donuts, spy pie, local organic milk, coffee steins, seasonal drinks, and another cafe starter kit, the schnitzel pie. Classic mocha pot. Oh no. The milk of my cart. Uh, roastery connections. Uh, espresso machine. The single origin croissant. A burst uh, uh, pound dream team. Board game geeks blend. Dice tower French press. The sugar cube dice. Cafe starter kit and a maple pie. Ooh. Before I forget, that would be a fun cake or pie to make. So that is something I should probably talk to um, Daniel at Board Game Feast to see if he could make that or. I know we've I've talked about before in another game that had a recipe uh, to challenge him to making something that would be cool to make. So next up in that de uh, deck of cards is this lightning bolt symbol type style of cards. Let's see what these are. The exposed brickwork. So this is kind of like what your um, cafe looks like in some way. The industrial lighting. Uh, free finals, okay. Anti-marketing campaign. Here's a bug in a costume. Buy our coffee. We have our vintage furniture. Or we can try this other shot, uh, other place that maybe has a photo automat. The, the crappy Wi-Fi with our, our brick phone. The multilingual menu. Free city maps. Berlin Bear Statue, the smoking section, wall of vinyl, the decorative instruments, and open mic nights with 3 a.m. sessions, or maybe we're going to change it up a bit, have some black lights with a disco ball and thematic party flyers, and add some 24-hour service, free party favors. And you got yourself a unique cafe. Uh, but maybe when you change it up a bit and go with the, the angel investment that uh, gives us plenty of money to kind of design it how we want, uh, where we use some smart ads uh, that uh, even have a meeting room at the cafe uh, with early open times, uh, the opportunity meetups, or maybe we're, we're more focused on the bicyclists and we have a bicycle pump laid out for them. Um, and viral ad campaigns with a to-go window where they can ride by with ample bike parking or in the hidden entrance for them even or let's change it up for these students and say okay there's a bulletin board talking about different things with uh, student coupons frequent customer cards or even free pens for, for studying or coffee education courses or the tandem meetups <coughs> so we'll get into a different style of card, uh, bottom symbol now as well. We we'll go to the next deck that had the same backing. And then quick release it. might find a free arcade machine because we're, we're cheap state skates and we want all the free good stuff like hella cheap branding even 
or a hanging chairs because we want to lounge about. Um, there's a job board that no one's checking, of course. The handmade decor fits right in with the free art supplies and the provocative sculptures. Um, maybe they have some hand painted tables with impossible chairs. Uh, or maybe we need to kind of kick it up a notch and be a bit more high class with a VIP guest list uh, for our movie nights. Uh, with a wall of fame of who, sh who sh uh, drank drunk coffee here with our theatrical lighting and prestigious entrance. But that doesn't work for everyone. So maybe there's some overnight tables. Uh, we have a lending library where we can relax, um, kind of city lighting. Uh, the accept uh, P fan. We accept P fan. So. I'm not sure if that's like a recycling service of some sort based on the symbolology. I'd have to look that up. So I do apologize not knowing what that is um, based on this being in Berlin and the language difference. I'd have to look that up. Um, maybe there's an outdoor seating area. Or we're going to change it up again with a coffee-powered server. Uh, but they have fast internet. Lightning fast. Uh and then they have the sentient napkin holder. Be careful with those. And, but they accept crypto, so for those who want a more digital form of payment, uh, that might work. Uh, the voice activated chairs. And then we have the anti fascist plants, vintage metal posters, dark lighting, and broken windows. Um, that blend in with our historical furniture. Or we can change it up and try something different with our get out of jail free cards. Um, that uh, criminal's code applies in our in our cafe uh, with free disguises, borrowed signage, uh, with a secret escape door. Let's have a little fun, a little pun with a mugshot uh, or safe windows investigation board uh, free leads metal detectors or maybe we need to kind of start selling some more um, and to make more money in different ways so we have uh, barista action figures the, the mecha barista 3000 x2 uh, baby safe decor maybe uh, the families are coming in now uh, the booster seats, uh, the costume employees, and the they call the Montessori objects. Uh, maybe you'll find a happy cactus, refreshing aprons, and a workout and workout furniture next to the Zen table decor and motivational signage. Maybe that's not your jam. Maybe you prefer the fancy table crap with fancy aprons, coffee fountain, and a bean chandelier sitting above a fancy uh, piece of furniture. You could have some gorgeous decor with the changing room, stylish aprons, and the, the garden robe that uh, you wear while sitting next to beautiful furniture. It might work for you, it might not, but maybe you might give away some free newspapers or have a wall of news with a scrolling menu ticker. Uh, Museum of Journalism, that can be reported on with the streaming setup. And a word I can't pronounce, the Majiv uh the Bok Cafe, uh, the Challenge Coin, Subliminal aprons, the modernist chairs, shrine to local hero, classic aprons, and coffee tasting events. Yeah, we got one more deck in it. Uh, it looks like there's going to be a few more of these style of cards in it as well, of different things that make your cafe stand out among the crowd. Uh, for special items or aspects that your cafe is well known for.
in the last deck that was in the main box. And again, we still have a few cards to look at that were outside of this main box because uh, they were uh, Kickstarter stretch gold style pieces. So let's see. Um, I can actually have that deck. Scroll. Okay, there's another deck of types of cards. Uh, several different types of cards in this uh, open deck. So try to separate them all. And here we go. The last few of this type. We have our roasting glasses. The barista competitions. Avant-garde decor. Maybe a board game library. Now that's my type of cafe. That would, I would go to. I'm going to set that aside. Because that's... I'd like to find that. They might even have some free sleeves or membership cards with the playtest nights and a local pickup. So, a lot of interesting choices to make your cafe stand out. So, let's see what this next set of cards is. This one has the outline of a full person on it. So, let's see what they show. So, we have a Joe 9000. Optimus Roast, Cough E, the R2 Bean 2, the Bean 3PO, a lot of subtle hints on these namings uh, to refer uh, reference other things, uh, the Poroman, the Tatiaroma 89, the Percolator, Robocup, Ultra Blend, the Sieve, the CV, uh, Cortada, uh, Pianos, Maria 27, Aromia, Percolatrix, Machado Kusanagi, the Blendor Universe, the Rosie 62 and the Suyurano. Uh, so a lot of the, this artwork in these is very similar. Uh, very minor changes in some of them. Uh, but they're kind of like the robot style. So I'm assuming these are the Automa uh, solo player style cards. I'd have to look up the rules again. But this does appear to potentially be the Automa deck. Uh, A, because they have more the robot style artwork. To kind of as a reminder. Okay, so next up we have these with the little brain inside the skull symbol. We have the Benjamin Pates, the Nami Nostraford, Cola Loca, Pablo Fush. Oh, I should probably start stop saying these names because I'm majorly mispronouncing them. Uh, the Amir Blank, Yumi Chori, Kadirk Us, Ensgar Oberholz, Morgan Love, James McGuire, Maria Olivier, and to Jamalia Murphy. I don't know if it's D because D J A M I L A. I don't know if it's Jamalia, Jamalia. So I do apologize if that's referencing a very specific person. How to say their name? Okay, and then I'll bet these are potentially scoring cards because they have and show different backs. Um, let's see what the face of them show. This is hipsters. Uh, it talks about hipsters. Hype, raise your hype by one. If your hype is already at five, take one good review instead. Super hype, activate hype twice. These are, uh, possibly are goals of some sort because there's tourists, musicians, party animals, startuppers. Cyclists, students, 
the fun employed expats, starving artists, performers, street smarts, tech nerds, rebels, criminal minds, uh, authority figures, happy families, health nuts, upper class, fashionistas, hungry media, friendly locals, the coffee connoisseur, quality beasts, board game media, and board game geeks. I do like that subtle uh, addition of the board game stuff because it is a board game and like that, that's who we are, that's who's playing it, so why not add that uh, fun addition to the game. And then these appear to be uh, potentially, so yeah, player reference cards. Um, but the face of these um, kind of goes through, uh, talks of the phases and the actions. So reference cards for every player. Um, and you can get one that matches the player board that you end up taking. So let's take a look at all of the additional pieces that uh, came packed outside of the main game box. Uh, so Kickstarter... I don't know if they're exclusives, um, but I think some of this was stretch goal based. So I don't know how much of this will be sold in the future. So keep that in mind as you see these pieces. First off we have, what appears to be a little micro miniature coffee mug. But they're not the same in that one is full and one just has drops left. So you can see there, uh, these were made of wood, uh, painted white or brown paint. So, and then this uh, little Ziploc has some meeple pieces, um, game released by Quality Beast. These are Quality Beast meeples, a uh, little orange box-like uh, creature. That is a fox or a red panda. I think it's it. So there's some custom uh, animeeples. Um, I'm not sure how they get used, but they have a barista apron on them. It says uh, the, on the package it says quality beast cube meeples bear barista. So they are barista meeples. Uh, so if they're baristas, then that's probably a red panda style uh, bear and of course the pun of the bear barista or barista so more meeples are fun this little bag right here has what it calls um quality beast sees the bean resource bags three packs of bags you can put resources in uh three different ones we have looks like they have a relatively flat bottom uh, rounded drawstring tops. Oops, almost dropped that one. Uh, okay. So this one is for the coffee beans. Sit it on the table like that, put all the beans in it, maybe pass it around, store it potentially for the sugar cubes. And then for the uh, milks. Okay, and then we still have some cards to look at. So we have three different packs here. We have the uh, City Celebrities Board Game Media Quality Beast. I'm going to go with the City Celebrities first because I think I want to do the board game ones at the very last just because uh, the board gamers here.
Okay, so this is, I guess, an expansion roll mini thing that came with. So seize the bean, city celebrities, customer expan uh, customer expansion pack. It has 13 cards. And then on the back of it, it talks about um, the slight difference it makes to the game, apparently. Back is the customer symbol. So we're going to have the DJ Dizu. The Groons uh, Ampel Mansion. Nope. Uh, someone has to tell me how to say that. The Rotes. Same line, second word. The Penny Parker. The Flock Art. Purple Sloth. Okay. The Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Uh, Eva Gronbach. The Das Kuff. The Nicole Betfield. The Wood Games. Ernie. And cube, cube. So, city celebrities is a bit different. So the city celebrities are a funny mixture of actually famous, real life celebrities, fictional characters that are well known to many, and some obscure references that are dear to our hearts. The objective of the group is to show that being famous is. And the mainstream is not the only way to earn yourself a fan club. Uh, Ideal drone. So that is what it said on the back of the card, talking about the expansion. If you get the, if you know the reference to who these uh, characters or people are, speak up. Let's say which one's your favorite. Okay. And next up, we'll do the quality beats. So the quality beasts, uh, let's see what it says. It says, our backers asked for it, so here it is. A customer group uh, to introduce you to the majority of the Seize the Bean team and honor their tireless work bringing this game to life. I'm very thankful and proud of this group of people, and I'm very pleased to be able to put them into the game. Uh, Gail Krum. So these are... I guess part of the design team or, or others who have helped uh, the game along the way in some way. Uh, they have the Dilk Rom, who um, that was what the signature kept being Josh, the Mezzi Pulgar, Andy, Siri Cat. Ninja, Joder, Remy, Stefan, Roman, uh, we have Fun Beans, okay, Milk of Awareness, Firefox Croissants, QB Kirksey, so uh, the QB of the character, uh, I'm assuming Cracker, Cookies, kind of like we had the, the the zoo crackers before the animal crackers. These these are the, the QB crackers. The red panda pie. Okay, so that's confirming it is indeed a red panda. And then the QB, I believe, is the name of the character. We have the QB plushie. Uh, QB swag. Shameless propaganda. This is an amazing deck builder. Don't you say it's not. Well, I can't say it is or isn't until I play the game. Um, so, yes, deck building is one of the key themes of this game. So part of why there's so many cards. Interesting that they went with a smaller size of card for, for a deck builder. You don't see many deck builders with this many cards that go with this size. Most will use a standard playing size card. But not, not saying it won't work. I still have to put the game design tools used to create the game and then a Shark Tank sessions. 
So that is the uh, Quality Beast Customer Expansion Pack that the Kickstarter backers have, have included, apparently. Now, granted, this Kickstarter was several years ago, so I don't remember all the details about it, except that it was a 2018 kick, uh, February 2018 Kickstarter that uh, had different delays for different reasons, but did uh, ship, of course, because you see here on the table, I received it this week. So now we have the uh, Board Game Media Customer Expansion Pack, 20 cards. And these are, this is a small selection of the beautiful community of people that make up this world of board game content from videos to podcasts to written reviews and more. I love them. And I am eternally grateful for their tireless work. These folks give for the industry. Uh, Delcron. So let's see which uh, content creators were referenced in this. Now granted because of when this was on Kickstarter. I don't know if and who are current versus uh, older ones who still do making content who isn't. Um, so we'll just see who shows up. They Warful Reviews Board Game Record Fluff and Crunch Hunter and Cron Ant Lab, uh, Rado, the Slicker Drips, or not, it just says Slicker Drips, uh, Heavy Cardboard, Suzanne Sheldon, I'm getting off screen a bit, uh, What's Eric Playing? We have Blind Playtest uh, play Blends, The Mook of Truth, Prototype Drip Machine, Preview Snacks, Proud Macaroons, Preview Prototypes, Inclusive game, Gamer Bands, nice, Streaming Setup, <laughs> yep, Gaming Magazines, and random furniture. So a lot of fun references in that from some names I recognize to some I don't um, to icons and very classic things that um, both from streaming, playing games, helping with designers, um, working booths, conventions, and in general, a lot of interest, fun references in that as well. So that was the uh, board game media expansion pack uh, but I have a lot of pieces to put away um, a lot of ziplocs to put different decks into the cardboard tokens into um, so this is one I probably will not be doing my shake test on for for you on on screen just because it's gonna take me a while to pack this away uh, and figure out how I want to pack it because I'm not going to throw it in there loose as it is. It did come with Ziplocs, so I do know I can pack it well. Uh, but because of all the Ziplocs, uh, it'll stay separate. It might be a little loose in the box, but in general, I feel I will be happy with how it fits, it fits back in the box without remixing itself. Because uh, my biggest complaint is typically when uh, games, especially with cards, don't have a good storage solution such as Ziplocs or a good spot for them. And so with the Ziplocs, they won't mix the decks back um, or slide around too much in the box after I close it. I am happy with that. Um, I'm going to have to look up and figure out uh, what all these stickers are used for. But yes, that was uh, Seize the Bean um, from Quality Beasts. It is a 60 to 90 minute game using uh, deck building mechanics. Uh, one to four players. Ages 13 and up. 